Uh, Wang Chun, um, walk us through very briefly on the Singapore Accountancy Commission because I'm not sure that everyone actually knows uh, what SAC is and what its missions are. Well, uh, thanks uh, Cesar for inviting me uh, to, to this interview. The, the journey for the accountancy sector in Singapore really began back in late 2008 where the, uh, the Singapore government convened a committee to develop the uh, accountancy sector or CDAS for short. Uh, so in, in late 2008 with that uh, committee that was formed, uh, we embarked upon an 18-month uh, study of the accountancy sector and the result of that study was a report that was issued in April of 2010. Uh, so that was quite a long while ago and uh, you know we, we took our time <laughs> and uh, in april of this year uh, we implemented the first of the 10 recommendations in the cdas report uh, so on april the first of this year uh, we formed the singapore accountancy commission uh, which is a statutory body under the uh, ministry of finance and if you read the cdas report uh, that was recommendation number 10. so we were sort of working backwards uh, so we've got nine more recommendations to do and, and really the, the mission of the Singapore Accountancy Commission uh, once given birth is to implement the other nine uh, recommendations. If you look at the, uh, the commission's logo, uh, which is a bit of a, like a hash, hashtag sign or tic-tac-toe, somebody call it, uh, there are nine quadrants in that logo uh, which represents the nine recommendations. Uh, so the, the, the number nine is uh, forefront in my mind. Uh, but I don't buy 4D, so... <laughs> yeah, it, it is very interesting. And I would like to focus, when you talk about the nine uh, uh, missions, I <clears throat> imagine one would be developing the CFO as a profession in Singapore, and another would have to do with the chartered accountants, the new uh, ch uh, accountancy designation. Um, uh, and from the questions that I've been getting, uh, I think these are the two things that um, uh, people are interested in. Let, 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 let me check first with the, uh, the, uh, the CFO development goal. What exactly does the SAC want to do in, in respect to uh, the CFOs? Well, with, with that, let me, let me set the, the ground for what we call the accountancy sector. Uh, so, so going back to history again, the committee to develop the accountancy sector. If you look at that phrase, accountancy sector, it's, it's pretty nebulous mm -hmm. in the sense that what really is the accountancy sector? Uh, in, in our definition, the accountancy sector comprises those who work in the public accounting entities okay. or what we call the accounting firms. The practitioners. The yeah. practitioners. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, or, and then the other segment uh, what we call the uh, professional accountants and business, which is really under the IFAC definition. Okay. And these are really the CFOs, the finance, <coughs> the finance directors, the internal auditors, risk management, business valuation, tax. And, and there's a lot of them. In fact, you know, to be honest with you, we have no idea uh, how many professional accountants in business there are in Singapore. Okay. Uh, we can use membership in uh, professional bodies as a proxy. Okay. Like we know ICPAS has about 28,000 members, uh, ACC has about 10,000, uh, CPA Australia has about 7,000, uh, then you have ICAW, ICAA, mm -hmm. but there are people who are not members of professional bodies who are uh, qualified, okay. but we have no idea where they are. Okay. Uh, but you know, so the accountancy sector is pretty nebulous once again. And what we're trying to do is to segment them into areas where we can help. Uh, and the SAC is a promotional body. Even though we have a little bit of regulatory oversight, uh, if you look at our act, by and large, we are a promotional body. And our mantra when we go to market is really to collaborate. Uh, if you look at recommendation uh, number two of the CDAS report, uh, one of the specific recommendations is to set up a Singapore CFO Institute. Okay. Uh, and with that institute, is really uh, to promote, to celebrate, uh, and to champion the role of the CFO. Uh, and you know, whether it's going to be uh, any certification programs, whether there's any membership of a CF Institute, uh, that's something that we want to hear from the marketplace. Mm. Uh, if you look at our website on the CFO Institute, uh, there are no membership uh, requirements. So anybody is open to join the events and uh, act activities of the CFO Institute. Uh, and like I say, our mission for the CFO Institute is to celebrate, champion, promote uh, the role of the CFO, uh, not just in the, the working world, but really at schools. For example, 
a couple of weeks ago, I was at a high school, the Dunman High School, where I spoke to the kids about you know, what does it take to be a CFO. Uh, so that's one of the many things that we do in order to celebrate the role of the CFO. So what does it take to be a CFO from the point of view of the SAC and the CFO Institute? I asked this question, I, I did a round table a while back, and there was a suggestion that the CFO should be a CPA. The CFO should take an exam before he become a CFO. Uh, and there should be all sorts of requirements. Okay? But there was a big pushback from some of the CFOs on the panel saying, you don't ask the CEO, you don't ask the COO, you don't ask the CIO to take exams and to have requirements. Why would you need to have the CFO uh, have all these requirements? Is that something that um, you are looking at in terms of qualifying who the CFO can be of any company? Hmm. Well, I mean, if, if you read Shakespeare, you will know that you know, a rose by, by any other name will smell just as sweet. Um, so a CFO, whether he or she is a CPA, CA, uh, should still be a CFO. Okay. And, and that's why the, the CFO Institute, we created the ideal CFO framework. Right. Uh, if you look at the CFO Connect website of the CFO Institute, uh, what we have is that we spoke to the industry, we have an advisory council, and we said, what does the ideal CFO look like? Uh, and so we put down these are the uh, ideal CFO characteristics and what we do is that we encourage people to adopt that ideal CFO framework. Uh, we are not here to push certification or qualification or membership. You know, if something is really good, uh, people will, will flock to it uh, like bees to honey and you don't need to force people to be certified. Okay. So, so the ideal CFO was that based on CFOs, you ask them what the ideal CFO is? or yep. And can you give us an idea as what, what is the ideal CFO? Maybe a lot of these people are actually ideal CFOs. Well, I mean, it, I can't remember everything. <laughs> okay. Do they need to be CPAs, for example? No, we, we don't go down to that tactical level. Okay. But clearly, for example, leadership, uh, right. you know, being collaborative. Uh, these are some of the, the characteristics of what we call an ideal CFO. Mm -hmm. and, and our job at the CFO Institute is really to go out to the marketplace and then to promote this ideal CFO framework okay. so that it can be embedded in all the programs that's related to CFOs. Mm -hmm. Like for example, you know, SMU is starting a master's in CFO leadership uh, okay. in this August. So it's a great program and the CFO Institute has supported uh, that program. Mm. Uh, we also support other uh, uh, CFO programs like the uh, ICAW F10 program. Okay. So with that, what we hope is that they will then adopt the ideal CFO framework as part of their delivery mechanisms. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know, if the market is doing something, the CFO Institute will not uh, duplicate, but instead we will collaborate and we will champion and we will celebrate. Okay. Just to be clear, the, um, the ICAEW program and the SME program, those are paid programs. Would, would there be like scholarships, grants, or things like perhaps the SAC can do for would-be CFOs and actual CFOs um, uh, to be helped, or tax breaks? I, I don't know how, how these things go, training breaks and so on. Well, there, there are tax breaks, uh, you know, uh, the PIC, for example, there are tax breaks uh, under the Ministry of Finance for people who want to go for training. Okay. Thank you.